Hey, Tina, I heard the big news. Is it true? Are you really going to get married? Oh, wow, Jess, it's been so long since I last heard from you. But yes, it's actually true. We're going to try and have the wedding before the end of the year. Wow, really? Oh, that's coming up quickly, though. Honestly, I really am surprised, though. You used to be so shy and fat and ugly when we were in school together. In fact, I think it's just unforgivable that you think you can even get married before me. Wait, what? Uh, I'm sorry, what is all this all of a sudden? I get that you want to try and show that you're better than me by getting married first, but I just think that makes your wedding all the more sad. Honestly, did you really think that this would change the fact that you're still the same shy little downer that you always were? Do you really think that I'm getting married just so that I can brag about it to you? And why do you keep bringing up how I was in high school? And not only that, but who do you think you are to tell me whether I can or can't get married? You don't need to get so mad about it. I'm only being honest with you. After all, you've always been in my shadow ever since we were little kids. It's not just high school. All throughout our childhood, you could never once manage to outshine me. But I guess you think that this is your shot, huh? Jess, I really don't even know what to say to this. You don't actually think that's why I'm getting married, do you? Honestly, part of me can't even blame you for what you're trying to get away with here, but I still think that it's just pathetic. After all, I am clearly the much prettier, popular, all-around better one out of the two of us. So with that said, why don't you just give up on this silly wedding business? After all, I doubt that whoever you're going to marry can even be all that great since he's marrying you. Okay, Jess, you really are going too far. You don't need to start insulting my fiancé now. He is a really kind, sweet guy who cares a lot about me, and I won't let you badmouth him. So he's kind and sweet and cares a lot? Basically, what you're telling me is that you are going to marry someone ugly then, huh? Because who else would want to marry a woman like you? I doubt that this guy is even all that great. Probably just some loser who only has a part-time job at a grocery store or something. Jess, you literally have no idea what you're talking about, so please stop making so many assumptions about my fiancé. I'm just saying the only man I would ever let marry me would have to be working for a huge company and have a great salary. In fact, if you really want to know, I'm dating someone right now who is quite high up in the management for Orange Industries. Well, I didn't ask, I don't really want to know, and it's clear that you're just trying to gloat. But I'm afraid if that's who you're dating, your attempt to brag failed. What are you talking about? Are you saying that you're with someone even better than that? Well, it's just that my fiancé also works for Orange Industries, and last I heard, you work there as well, don't you? Hold on a second, are you serious about that? Please tell me that's some kind of a joke. Your fiancé really works at Orange? That's right. The guy that you said couldn't have anything but a part-time job is one of your co-workers. And his name is Josh, if you really want to know. You can probably guess who he is now, though. In fact, he's a branch director, so I wouldn't be surprised if you were actually working for him. Hold on a second, you're telling me you're going to marry Josh Beck? As in THE Josh Beck? That's who you're going to marry? Don't tell me that you do actually know him. Wow, I was only guessing that you might have, but I guess I was right. No, this can't be right. I don't understand. Josh is all mine. He can't be marrying you. That's impossible. Not only are you going to be getting married before me, but you're going to try and take my man away from me, too? You think you can just have an affair with another woman's man, get hitched, and get away with that? Hold on just a second there. What do you mean that my Josh is also your Josh? You don't actually mean that you two are dating as well, do you? Of course we're dating. Who else did you think I was talking about when I said I was dating a man from Orange? I mean, Josh is the perfect package. He's handsome, smart, so young, and yet so high up in the company. How dare he choose some loser like you over me? Josh, pick up the phone right this instant. I am dead serious. Are you cheating on me? We are this close to narrowing down our wedding day, so please tell me this isn't happening. You're not actually going out with Jess behind my back, are you? Tina, what in the world are you talking about? Do you really think that I'm cheating on you? Who's this even coming from? Who in the world is Jess? Jess is a girl that I've known ever since I was little. She reached out to me when we were talking and... Uh, she told me that she was dating you after I told her that you and I were engaged. Wait, what? 
Did this lady really say that about us? Are you serious? Yes, it's all true. She told me that you both worked at Orange Industries and that you were having a secret office romance. Well, uh, Tina, you have to believe me when I say that I've never, ever cheated on you. I mean, I didn't even know that we had a Jess working in the office. Or at least certainly not in the department that I directly manage. But she said that she worked at the same company with you and even said that you were the branch director. Hold on a sec. Are you talking about Jess Jones? Is in the temp that we hired? You two are childhood friends? Well, I wouldn't say that we're exactly friends, and I also have no idea if she's working as a temp or not. Okay. Well, the only Jess that I know of working under me is Jess the temp. Well, I never really guessed that she'd pop up in my personal life like this. To think that she was really trying to say that her and I were dating, that's just crazy. Why do you say it like that? Did something happen between the two of you at work or something? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really want to talk about this, but I guess now I really have no choice. But the thing is that her and I had a little trouble with each other earlier on. She kept telling other people in the office that her and I were going out as well, but it just was not true. You have to know that I'm telling the truth. You're kidding me. So you mean she's been telling other people this same thing? Yeah, but I guess maybe she wanted to try bragging to you since you two go way back. I don't want to sound rude, but she very much struck me as someone who looks down on others just because she's pretty. In fact, all of the temps that we ended up hiring were already married, so I always wondered if that's why she was telling people that we were together and engaged. I don't even know what to say to that. That's just completely unhinged behavior. What is the matter with Jess? I mean, I told her to stop spreading those rumors, and I always tried to correct what she told people, but I can't keep an eye on her all the time. And, you know, she always was such a prideful person, even when we were in school together. I'm not really surprised that she refused to stop even after you asked her to. I remember she used to make up stories about dating popular boys at our school just to make herself look better. But then the truth would always come up, and the guy would always be so clueless when asked if he was really dating Jess. Wow. It sounds to me like she's probably gotten pretty good at telling this same story. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something she's had a lot of practice with. And I don't suppose there's any chance that you could transfer her somewhere else, right? I just really don't know how I feel about the two of you working too close together. Who knows what she'll try next? Well, I don't think that you have anything to worry about. You see, Jess's contract actually runs up this month, so... After that, she'll have to go and find another job. Oh, really? Oh, that's a huge relief to hear. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, typically, we hire our Thames, but HR's report on her is just filled with misconduct, spreading rumours around the office, and her output of work is just so far below the peers she was hired with. And obviously, we've tried lots of things to convince her to improve her quality of work, but whatever we say seems to go in one ear and out the other. So for now, our strategy has been to be pretty hands-off until the contract runs up. Oh, I see. Well, it sounds to me like that's the best thing to do to prevent any kind of drama from unfolding. And I just want to say that I am so sorry for accusing you of cheating on me before. Oh, Tina, I have to say I was really surprised, but I understand now that we've talked out. Anyways, I've got to get back to it. Talk to you soon. Tina, what is the matter with you? Why did you stop reading my texts? You know I can see when you've opened them, right? Anyways, I wasn't telling you how you don't deserve to get married before me. You do know that, right? Oh, Jess, I am so, so sorry to leave you like that. I was just talking to Josh a little about all of this. And he made it clear to me that you two have absolutely nothing going on. In fact, it sounds like he's actually actively trying to avoid you. Wait, what? Did he really say that? But of course he and I are dating. You really just need to give this a rest. I talked to Josh and he cleared up this whole thing for me. He told me all about how you've been spreading rumors all over the office that you two are together. But you really shouldn't be using people like that to try and fluff up your own reputation at work. 
Okay, well, sure, at first, when I started telling people about us, it was all a lie, but then Josh and I really did start going out and it stopped being a lie. He even proposed to me and we're supposed to be getting married. What in the world are you talking about? I mean, I can still remember the day he did it. I had no idea he could be so angry. He called me into his office and yelled at me about something to do with work or something, and that's when I felt it, the love that we had for each other. Love? What part of that sounds like love to you? Well, I went into his office and he had this really stern look on his face, and he asked me to quit lying to people around the office about us. But that means that he was telling me it wasn't a lie anymore and that we were going out together. Are you kidding me? Is that really what you got out of that statement? Of course it is, and he talked to me about how my contract is going to be coming up soon and how he and I should get married, but he really is such a subtle way with words. Jess, I have no idea what it is that he actually said to you, but I can guarantee that is not what he meant. I don't know what's going on in that head of yours, but it is not living in the same reality as everyone else. I don't know what to tell you. After all, Josh and I are already going to be getting married next month. I've already made my appointments to get my hair done and everything. I mean, the only thing that I can't wrap my head around is why you thought that you ever had a chance with a man like Josh. What are you talking about? You are literally delusional. Why can't you just wake up? <laughs> Man, you are such a sore loser. Do you know that? You're just jealous because I have Josh and you don't, and you're finally having to come to terms with that. Are you kidding me? You're the one who has no idea at all about what you're talking about. But don't worry. I'll still send you an invitation to our wedding just so that you'll finally see that I'm telling the truth. Hey, when are you finally going to show up here? You really have got some nerve if you think I'll let you miss this. What are you even talking about right now, Jess? In fact, where is everybody? Even Josh's parents aren't here yet. In fact, I'm the only one here at all. Maybe everyone just got lost finding the place and are all going to show up soon? Wait, hold on a second. Show up where? Why are you waiting for Josh's parents? What do you mean, where am I? I'm at the wedding venue that Josh picked out for us to get married in. I'm here in my white dress waiting for the wedding party. But Hawaii isn't all that big, so I don't get how everyone is late like this. Wait a minute, you're in Hawaii right now? Well, duh, I told Josh that's where I wanted to get married, and he told me that he would make it happen. I really am so proud of him for doing this for me while he was so busy with work. It's always been my dream to get married in some kind of beautiful place like this, and now it's finally coming true. I don't even know what to say. I really hope this is some kind of big joke for your sake, though. Did you really fly all the way to Hawaii to get married? Um, hello? Haven't you been reading any of the texts that I've been sending you just now? So, anyways, are you almost here? The wedding is going to start soon, and I am still waiting for everyone to show up. I don't get how they could all be this late. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but we're all still in the city, and that's where our wedding is happening. So we're all still here back home. Nobody's going to Hawaii to see you get married. Wait, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? That can't be right. I'm not getting married in the city. But if you're telling me that everyone's got the wrong address and is still in the city, then I'm going to be really mad. Seriously, what are you even talking about? I really just had no idea you would even take things this far. I mean, how did you actually get on a plane to Hawaii without realizing what a huge mistake you were making? Mistake? No, no, you're misunderstanding. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Everyone else made the mistake because they're still not here yet. I'm still waiting for everyone to show up here for my big Hawaiian wedding. Jess, this is the last time I'll say this. You and I are not getting married. Nobody is going to Hawaii. Now please, just stop this. Mr. Beck, is that you? It is. And honestly, at this point, I have to say that I think I'm scared of you more than anything. 
I mean to be so wrapped up in your delusions that you flew all the way to Hawaii. I think you should go and find a therapist or something. Josh, how could you say that about me? That is so rude. And just why are you texting me from Jess's number? You're supposed to be here for our wedding. Did you not read my message? I'm not marrying you and I never, ever was. The only person I'm getting married to today is Tina. No, you're wrong. You're marrying me and I'm going to be your housewife and never have to work another day in my life. That's why you said that you weren't going to be hiring me after my contract ran out, right? Because we're getting married. I seriously don't even know how to answer that. I told you we weren't hiring you because you've been a terrible employee. You've been telling everyone we're together after I asked you not to, and now you're harassing my fiancé. You've ignored everything I've been trying to tell you and insisting that your version of reality is the correct one. Wait a second, you mean that you've really been mad at me this whole time? Of course, I've been mad with you. But after a while I just gave up because I realised there's no point in talking to you. But anyways, I've got my own wedding to hurry about here, so I don't have time to deal with your craziness anymore. So good luck getting back home. I hope you brought a return ticket. Wait, no, this can't be happening to me. We were supposed to be getting married. You're supposed to be all mine. You can't do this to me. You can't just leave me here. You're supposed to be mine. All mine. Apparently Jess hasn't bought a return ticket because she thought that Josh and her were going to go on their honeymoon right after the wedding. She had also spent all of her money on nice clothes and getting her makeup done for the wedding, also thinking that she's going to be able to rely on Josh for his money. By the time she finally flew back here, it was clear that she had been through quite a lot. She looked an absolute mess. The last thing that Josh ever did for her was to send a company vehicle to pick her up from the airport and drive her home. On the way there, Jess had it explained to her that her position with the company was terminated as her contract had finished. In the end, Jess ran to her parents to beg them for help, but they were just as aware of her delusions as the rest of us and refused to play along. In fact, they offered to let Jess live with them if she sought out psychiatric help for her issues. Jess insisted nothing was wrong with her, and without a job, money, or anywhere else to go, she had to say yes. I can only hope that with her parents' love and some good therapy, that Jess can realize the mess she made of her own life. As for Josh and I, we got married without any issues and continue to live happily as husband and wife. We blocked Jess and everything, changed our number, and Josh even put in a request to manage a different branch so that we could move. With any luck, that's the last we'll ever hear from Jess. Hey, Haley, you've been avoiding me up until now, but you're definitely going to come to the mom's lunch today. It's Saturday, so you can't use work as an excuse for not going. <laughs> it gets better, though. I decided to have it at your house. Won't that be convenient for you? We'll be there at noon sharp. Right now, it looks like 10 people are coming. You can choose whether you want to make the lunch yourself or order out. It doesn't matter to me. Just make sure you get enough. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Actually, I'm in the mood for sushi. There's an amazing sushi place that just opened downtown. Why don't you order from them? Haley, what's going on? Why aren't you at home? Oh, is he? Um, good afternoon. Don't good afternoon me. You had better not be pretending to be out of your house right now. Okay, so I just took a look at the messages you sent me earlier this morning. I'm sorry to tell you like this, but our family is away on vacation today. What? We won't be back until tomorrow. What's the matter with you? You should have told me that way sooner! There are ten hungry mothers waiting at your front door right now, expecting to eat expensive sushi at your lunch party! We left the house at 9 a.m. this morning, and we've been on the road until just now. I didn't even look at my phone until a few moments ago. Come on. Izzy, 
You can't just invite yourself and 10 other people to someone else's house for lunch. Much less three hours before you plan to come. What's the big deal? It's Saturday. Yeah, that's why we're going on a little trip as a family today. And for the record, I do sometimes have to go into the office on Saturdays too. I've been telling you for a long time, Izzy. You need to give me plenty of advance notice if you want to make any plans involving me. Yeah, but even when I ask you in advance, you always say no. I work on weekends, Izzy. Of course I'm going to say no to a weekday lunch invitation. People who work regular office jobs can't just hop out of an extended lunch whenever they feel like it. You could take time off. It's not that easy. Sorry, Izzy, but we just got our food from the drive-thru, so we're going to get back on the road now. I gotta go. Hey, we're not finished here. I'm sorry, Izzy, but we'll have to talk about this later. Unbelievable. Do you have any idea how much money you cost me? Ugh, good evening, Izzy. I'm sorry, what did you mean? How did I cost you money? The lunch last Saturday. I told all the other moms that we were all invited to your house to eat sushi from the expensive new restaurant. But you completely blew me off and went on vacation with your family. So I got stuck taking them all out to have lunch at that restaurant instead. I had to pay for 10 lunches. Izzy, I think you're missing one very important detail. One detail. You are the one who invited everyone to my house without even talking to me about it in advance. I don't recall ever saying yes to that plan. I didn't even see your message until you were already there. And you're the one who wanted to eat sushi and expected me to pay for it. I think most people would take the complete lack of response as a pretty certain sign that the other person had not gotten the message, don't you? Oh my god, you are so selfish, Haley. Selfish? Me? You really don't get it, do you? Listen, babe, I'm what you call the boss around here. I'm the leader of the mom's club. So all the moms in my circle are my underlings. They do what I say, when I say. Uh, what? You're the boss of the mom's club? Um, yeah, what of it? I don't recall ever joining any club. And second of all, I don't recall ever agreeing to make you my boss. Was there an election or something that I missed? Shut up! I don't need an election to know I'm the boss. It's just the facts. I'm the leader of all the moms in the neighborhood, like it or not. Is that so? Yes, that's so. Got it. The next lunch is going to be at your house for real this time. Next Saturday. Be ready. Sorry, I can't do that day. Excuse me? You told me to give you an advance notice, right? Well, I just did, so make it work. My company's new employees are undergoing a series of training sessions, and I had plans to go and check in on how they're doing on Saturday. Are you kidding? Did you really think I'd buy that excuse? Those training sessions are for important people to deal with. You know, executives, managers, people who matter. What's some loser part-timer like you going to do there? You're just going to be standing around in the back of the room watching everyone else do the real work? <laughs> You'd only be getting in the way. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm not a part-timer. Wait, really? <laughs> okay, my bad. You're just a temp staffer then. Wrong again. Stop changing the subject. This Saturday, you're going to host the mom's lunch at your house. And this time, you are going to buy us all the sushi we can eat. Do I make myself clear? I just told you, I have work and I can't do it. Oh, and just so you can't get out of your responsibility this time, I'll go ahead and order the sushi for you. You can pay me back later, and yes, you will pay me back every last cent. Okay, well don't forget that I already told you no. Hey 
there, Haley. We're having an absolutely lovely sushi lunch at your house right now. Although, I have to admit, it's kind of weird that you're not attending a party at your own house. <laughs> huh? Wait a second. What do you mean you're having a lunch at my house? Are you actually in my house right now? How? I locked the doors when I left. Nope, we were able to get inside with no problem at all. It was so nice of you to leave someone here at the house to serve us. <laughs> Who is this old lady? Your mom? Or your mother-in-law? Or just some woman you hired for us? Anyway, this was super nice of you to do. But just because you gave us a servant doesn't mean you're going to get out of paying the $5,500 bill. What the? $5,500? I ordered enough for 20 people. You know, so I could have some leftovers for later. <laughs> I have the old lady here pay for now, but you can pay her back when you get home. Don't keep her waiting, though. I doubt she has that much in her bank account. <laughs> what in the world are you talking about? My husband took my son to the mall to play today, and I've been at work since this morning. So none of us are home, and the house should be empty. Yeah, I figured as much. And that's why you left this old lady here, right? Your mom or mother-in-law or whatever. I did no such thing, Izzy. My mother and my husband's mother. Both of them passed away before we got married. What? Wait. Huh? What are you not getting, Izzy? My entire family is out of the house right now. No one is home. So there shouldn't be any old woman, much less my dead mother or mother-in-law, at the house right now. Hold on. So you're saying that? That woman who went and hid in the back room when we all came into the house? Is that... Oh my god, your mom's a ghost. Oh my god, don't be ridiculous. There is no such thing as ghosts. That woman who's in the house with you, you said you made her pay for the sushi, right? Ghosts don't have money. I mean, they're not even real. What are you, a third grader? Oh, yeah, that does make sense. Wait, so this was a prank? You're awful! You know I'm terrified of ghosts. I can't even watch horror movies. I get so panicked, I, I can't sleep. How could you pull such a cruel prank on me? I wouldn't go to so much trouble to pull some elaborate prank like this on you. But that's beside the point right now. If you're really in my house eating sushi like you say, and some woman let you into my house, then that means someone was trespassing in my house. This is very, very bad. I gotta call the police. Yes, I'm 100% sure that we're in your house. Ugh, you're terrible. If you keep going from prank to prank like this, I'm going to have a heart attack. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not pulling any pranks on you? You've got some nerve treating me like this on the day I'm celebrating my husband getting a new job. What? Your husband's new job? Yeah, isn't it great? He got scouted by some big shot marketing agency. So this week's mom's lunch is also a party for him. Wait, is your husband there with you right now? Well, duh, it's his party. Of course he's here. I see. And does your husband's name happen to be Stan? Uh, yeah, but why does that matter? Okay, well then... What? Tell your husband he's fired. Fired? <laughs> what is up with you? He's fired! <laughs> How can you fire him? <laughs> he doesn't even work for you! Actually, he does work for me. Huh? That big shot marketing agency you mentioned earlier, I'm the CEO. What? I told you that I couldn't host a lunch today because my company's new employees were undergoing a training session, didn't I? Your husband is one of the new hires who should be in that training session right about now. But he's never taken any of the training seriously at all. He's been blowing them off, taking long bathroom breaks, using his phone mid-session. And right now, he's absent without leave. I've been trying to contact him since this morning, but he won't answer his phone. Unbelievable. He was having a party to celebrate his new job. Wait, you're not making any sense. My husband was scouted by this company. Why should he have to attend some dumb training session? If he was scouted, doesn't that mean the company really wanted him to join? Trainings are for beginners. Sorry to break it to you, Izzy. But your husband wasn't scouted. What? I don't know what sort of story he's been telling you, but he got hired on as a part-timer, just like all the people at the training session today. 
no, he's a part-timer? He worked hard and proved himself. We have a system where part-timer employees can become full-time regular employees, but he's got to go through the process like everyone else. I'm going to talk to my husband. You wait right there. You were telling the truth. He quit his job at his last company because he could never get along with anyone else there. But he was too embarrassed to admit that he got hired into your company as just a part-timer. So he told me that he got scouted because of his impressive resume. Yeah, that's what happened. And like I just said, your husband's attitude at work was so painfully awful that I don't think he was ever going to make it as a part-timer. I was willing to give him more time to prove himself, but a no-call, no-show is just too much to overlook. I'm going to talk to his HR director right now and get his termination process started. Hey, wait, could you... I'm not... I've got it. How about I make you the boss instead of me? So, come on, please, don't fire my husband. You're gonna make me the boss? Yeah, just think about it. You'll be able to boss around all the other moms now. I would rather comb my hair with a rusty fork than do that. What? Oh, and one more thing. The police have been called. The police? I told my husband that there was an intruder in our house, so he rushed home from the mall to check on it. And when he got there, he saw our next-door neighbor desperately trying to escape from a window in her own house. Your neighbor? She was really panicked. She said that a bunch of women forced their way into her house and demanded that she pay for their sushi. So my husband let her borrow his phone and she called 911. Oh no. In your defense, our house is in a pretty new development area, so a lot of the houses do look very similar. Oh, don't tell me. I went to your neighbor's house by mistake. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Oh no, this is bad. Oh, like, really, really bad. What should I do now? Given your position, I guess you have no choice but to tell the truth. You got the address wrong and barred into some poor, unsuspecting elderly woman's house with a bunch of your friends. And you made that poor elderly woman pay $5,500 for sushi that you ordered. I think that covers everything that's gone on today. Did I miss anything? I can't believe this. This cannot be happening. Don't you know how that sounds? That makes it sound like we're a bunch of mobsters. Well, if the shoe fits, you've got to do something, Haley. You're an adult, and you got yourself into this mess. So you're just going to have to get yourself out of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to work. Haley, don't go. It seems that an unmarked, silent police car had arrived at the front of our neighbor's house while we were texting each other. And the mom's club was all taken away by the police before they even knew what was happening. After the dust had settled, our neighbor got right to work getting some justice for herself. She sued Izzy and her friends for the $5,500 she was forced to pay for the sushi, as well as punitive damages for the pain and suffering she experienced that day. Frankly, I thought she should have pushed for way more in damages. A little while later, Izzy and her husband divorced. Neither of them were determined to be capable parents, so their child was taken in by a relative. As for the rest of Izzy's mommy gang, they all met similar fates, getting divorced by their husbands or disowned by their families. <laughs> I'll bet all of them are going to be regretting following Izzy's lead for the rest of their lives. So it seems like now, the neighborhood will finally get some relief from their malicious hijinks. Thank God. <laughs>